The car fire continues to grow. This wildfire exploded overnight. The winds causing the flames to move over down towards at least one property just a few hundred yards away. This community here, almost every home has been leveled. Most of these homes not even skeletal. Cal Fire urges any homeowner that is ahead of this wildfire to consider evacuating. As the disaster response was getting started, we determined that we needed to stand up an incident management structure. You know, it was kind of an all hands on deck thing. So currently we have several large fires burning throughout the state, CAR being one of several. The CAR incident started sort of around Whiskey Town Lake and spread into the city of Reading. It didn't impact our facilities immediately it wasn't until the 26th when the fire began to rage out of control. We had as many as 15 transmission lines out at one time. Got the call Friday morning saying, I need you to go up to Reading. We're told there was no skate of visibility anywhere. It was critical that we needed the visibility of those stations to restore certain areas that were impacted. When the communication system goes down, the power system dispatchers were flying blind. Because they didn't have visibility, they had to deploy a journeyman to all the substations. We needed electricians to open disconnects to make sure that line was safe. 10, Flanagan, check open 282. And then had to call into the dispatchers and say, here's what's working, what is it? We were all on pins and needles wondering what was damaged again because we couldn't see. We're given a list of priorities of three substations, bring the comm back and allow those journeymen to be reassigned to other work. And our job was to make it safe and de-energize those lines so CAL FIRE firefighters and our linemen would be safe while they were working under those lines. We had a, a line in particular that was serving Trinity County that we wanted to do fire retardant treatment on some of the holes out in the field. And we had a contractor go out there and spray the poles down to try and mitigate some of the fire damage. We've experienced eight system-wide outages since July 26. We have the only hospital in the county here in Weaverville. Several of the restorations have depended on black starting Trinity Power Plant. It had never been done prior to this emergency. Fortunately, WAPA and Bureau of Reclamation installed some improvements at the plant a couple of years ago that allow that plant to be islanded. So that we can continue to provide power to them through the generation while our lines are being affected by the fires. Brian and his amazing linemen seemed to be everywhere at once, looking at every single line that was threatened. Really, at every turn, they went out of the way to do everything they could to get our power back on as quickly as possible, and, and I can't thank them enough. There were many communities up there that, that were impacted, and specifically the Redding area that got evacuated. July 26th was just a crazy night. I was actually on vacation up in Trinity County on the lake. When I was on my boat, I could see the, the smoke billowing up over the mountainside. It just all of a sudden come, started coming out the city. The speed at which it came was unprecedented. They were evacuating houses very quickly, neighborhoods very quickly. At that point, I think we'd already started rolling blackouts because we were at a critical point in our system as the transmission was failing all around us faster than we could, uh, more than we could generate, so, yeah. We saw quite a bit of destruction in the fire area. We're looking at 1,077 residences that were destroyed. Unfortunately, we know two that have lost their homes here that, that work at SNR. During the heat of this, we were down to a radial feed from WAPA. That was, we were hanging by a thread. We had a transmission line that was overloading. We had gas pressure that was causing problems. We have smoke starting to block the intakes of the generators. 
There were just so many things that were going wrong, and yet, together with WAPA and just our whole team, we, we kept it going, and it's, it's pretty astounding. Thank you. The community is going to be tested by these kind of things, and they're either going to come together and grow from it and become a better place, which I believe Reading will, or it'll let them destroy it. We are, for the month of August, offering a free drink and a free meal to anybody who either lost their home or is still currently under mandatory evacuation. Getting our community to a place where they feel safe, just a simple thank you. From what I've seen, the way I've seen my own employees respond, they wanted to go above and beyond our normal parameters, you know, and you have to make that call. It's like, yes, we are here for the community. That's why we exist. I think overall it was just such an outstanding team effort. It's just a real good testament to how the entire community pulls together. It is an interagency world that we work in. We wouldn't be able to accomplish putting a fire of this magnitude out without the cooperation that we've seen. It's extremely helpful to us in our efforts. I think federal employees have something inside of them that they feel a need to support a greater good. One of the huge benefits of public power is we are not in competition with one another. We are free to help each other, to, to refine our best practices, to support each other like disasters like this. We're here to benefit the community, period. We all want to help. We all want to help. Um, you know, because it could happen to anybody. It could happen to anybody.